Pit Puerta, thank you very much for your time. Always great to have you on the perfectly placed uh, platforms. I know punters really appreciate your input. Uh, we're going to chat about your runners on Wednesday at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. You start in race number one, King Viserys. It's over 1,100 metres, number six. Lungasani Galed, who gets the ride for you. Uh, some decent maiden form. I see they've opened the source up in the region of 18 to 10, and we're chatting off air. Is today the day? Uh, look, I, I obviously hope so. I do, I do think so. Um, He's a, he's a horse that's got the ability, but um, <clears throat> his mind is a, is a bit difficult. And um, I think it's going to be, it's gonna be um, very interesting because um, he, he just seems to get on so well with uh, Keenan. Um, everybody else seems to, to struggle with him. Um, and obviously, Jaledu doesn't know him at all. He's never sat on him. So it's going to be quite interesting. I think if, uh, if he can just put it in, um, I, I do believe that um, he's, he's the best horse in the race. So I, I'm expecting him to win. Uh, I just hope that everything goes right for him on the day. Fantastic. Let's move along to race number six. That's over 1,400 metres where you've got number four, Radicchio. Uh, Richard Faree gets the ride for you. Ran a very good race last time behind Nevada King. Um, he's actually got great form if you have a look at it. Yeah, I think this is a, this is a very, very tough race. Um, there's a, a few horses in this race, which is... Uh, got the form line of uh, horses that are now running in the Durban July. So um, it's, it's, it's obviously a very, very tough race, but um, I think he's very well. Um, he, he, last time when, when Richard rode him, he just didn't have pace and everything, but I think he was uh, a little bit uh, flat. Um, you know, he had three runs on top of each other, um, gave him a little bit of a break and he um, returned to, to good form last time after that break. So I, I'm hoping that um, um, you know, on, on, on race day, um, he's full of himself and, and quite energetic and can bring his best form. I think he's going to have to bring his best form to, to be able to win a, a, a race of this caliber. But um, I, he's, I, I think, you know, what he's shown me so far, he's in a good space and he's, he's got to be a good runner. Race number eight, over 1,200 metres, you've got number three, Scarpman. Sean Veal gets the ride. He's won his last two starts very well. He got three points for that last win. It is a competitive race uh, this time round, but how's he doing back at home? Look, he's doing very well. I'm, I'm, I, I couldn't ask him to be in a better space than what he is right now. Um, he's very fit. He's obviously a horse that's uh, got his issues and um, never really work him into a, into a race. You know, we've always got to nurse him into every race, but um, his last run was not uh, that long ago. And um, so he, he's still very fit and feeling well. So. I think um, I'm, I'm expecting a good run from him. It's obviously uh, it's his first time in this division, so um, you know the whole pace of the race and everything changes when you when you go up a, a division. Um, and he's running against some horses which have uh, won in this division and held their own in this division. So it's going to be tough for him. This is going to be a probably his toughest uh, test so far. Um, but I believe he, he's good enough. Um, it's just about getting him to the to the course sound and, and, and in a good space. So um, he hasn't worked yet this morning. Um, just hope that he comes through his work well. And if he does, um, he's a horse that you, you obviously got to include in all your bets. Just chatting about his last win, Pitts, uh, he did change legs at a crucial time in the race. Punters need to remember, obviously the heavens had opened up, conditions weren't really ideal. So it was a win full of merit. I think so. You know, I, um, watching that race live, um, I got I got a fright at about the 350. He, he, he faltered and and um, I, you know I thought that was him gone. And then he changed legs and he came back to win it. So I think that was a fantastic win um, for him to recover at that at that point and, and still come back and win it was uh, was was very good for me. And um, I know that we're expecting rain again on Wednesday. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, by the time we get to that race, the course hasn't cut up too much. Um, because it's obviously a big concern with, with his issues. He, he, he would ideally like a nice clean track. Um, I, I don't think we're going to get it, but um, as I said, he's, 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 he's very strong and, and, and healthy at the moment. So we, we just got to hope that things go well for him. The last of your runners come up in race number nine. You've got three. Let's start with number five, Trey Sheik, the ride of Craig Zaki. She ran a lovely fourth last time out behind Royal Lytham. Um, you've always said that she's a nice filly back at home. Yeah, she's a, she's a filly that we've been working on a, a lot just to try and get her, her mindset right. And, um, you know, she's been getting better and better with uh, with all three of her runs. Um, 
I think last time, you know, she was quite unfortunate. She was drawn on the outside and there was no pace on the outside and she got caught a little bit out of her ground. Um, had, had a bit too much ground to, to make up in the closing stages. Um, this time round, she's drawn on the inside um, and, and there is pace around her. So I think it'll be a little bit better for her. Um, she, she's well um, in a very good space and um, I, I believe that she's a, she's a big runner in this race. Number 11, Easy Money, the right of Louis Mkotwa. She's been consistent, not beaten too far. Um, she drops back in trip from 1,400 meters. Probably a, a horse that punters need to throw into the back end of quartets. I think this is a, this is a filly that, um, you know, her form is not, is not true. Um, you know, she, she's quite a difficult horse to, to ride. Um, and, um, you know, we were running over the 1,000 meters trying to get her to learn to, to switch off and, and finish her races and um, ideally she, she wants further. We, we put her in the 1400 last time. I, I was hoping that there was going to be a, um, a, a lot of pace in that race, um, having been it's the, the first time on the old course over the 1400 meters, but it, it didn't work out. They, they went too slow and she pulled very hard and fought and so obviously couldn't finish off her race. Um, the 1200, I think, might just be uh, the right distance for, for her at, at, at this t stage. And she, she, she put up fantastic work this morning. Her, her sprint up was, was really, really good. And if she can bring that to the, to the course, um, you know, she'll, she'll take a bit of beating. She, she really will. So <clears throat> my only concern with her really is, um, you know, on, on the way that she worked this morning, I, I just hope that she hasn't left, uh, left a race on the track this morning. But um, if she recovers well from it, um, she, she's a dark horse in the race. Fantastic. And then you've got number 14, Beneath the Moon, the ride of Keenan Stain. Uh, she's better than her last start. Uh, she also drops back to the sprinting trip. What are you expecting? Uh, I, I think that this filly uh, could be a big runner, yeah. Um, back, back to the 1,200 meters. Um, you know, we, we always thought that she, she wanted a bit uh, further, but she's, she's just been doing too much. And um, her, her second last start, she ran a... A, a, a great race, um, just over raced early and just got caught on, on the line. And then last time things just didn't work out for her, um, over raced completely and everything just went, went wrong with her. So coming back down the straight, um, drawn on the right side of the course for her because she hangs terribly. She's uh, the most difficult horse to ride. Um, I, I think she's got a lot in her favor um, in, in, in this race. and. She's got to be a big runner. I think uh, between the three horses that I've got here, it's very, very hard to choose between between them. Um, they've all got little little issues, and all of them just seem to be in the right space with the right draws, and and got a lot of the, in their favour. So um, I, I wouldn't leave in any one of these three out. As mentioned, punters love your inputs. They're going to rush off to the tote or the bookmaker. What do you advise they do on the day with Pitt Buerta's runners? Well, I, I do think that my best runner has got to be King Viserys. I just feel that he's in the in the right race. Um, it, it, it's, it's really only his mind that worries me. I'm not worried about anything else. He's in a very good space, very good condition. Um, his sprint up this morning was great. Um, he's definitely got to be my best runner. Um, very hard for me to choose in the last race between the three. Uh, if I have to stick my head out, I'm going to say Trashik. And um, I, I, I don't see her missing the first three, so... You know, I think you can go short there in your PAs and, and that. Um, and escarpment, I think, is a, an above average horse. Um, so, you know, you can obviously take him and uh, like um, give me the green light. And um, th there was one other horse in that, that race, which I, I thought was also going to be quite hard to beat. Uh, I think you can go short over there as well. Pitt, thank you very much for your time as always. Thank you.